Hi, Rick Perry here for Pro Audio Development Web Blog. This will be for my website, rickcperry.com. I wanted to start out by showing you, this is the stand in one of my videos that I'm actually going to use today. And it'll be good because I can scoot it real close to the table and work. So, let's go ahead and put that on the stand here. <clears throat> and get into the video the reason that we're here. Okay, today's video is going to focus on what I have here called the RF Explorer. Let's see if we get that just right. And that's this little device here. <clears throat> and what it is, is a Radio Frequency Explorer, RF. And you can see that it has uh, we will uh, pause that, and you see that it zeroes in on whatever frequencies. So it's going to show you the frequency and the, the gain at that frequency. Negative 90 is like nothing. Uh, the, the lower this number, the stronger the frequency. So you can choose the, the band that you want to scan, and you can pause it. You can center the frequency. There are other items like when you go to the menu. Um, <clears throat> this shows you the center frequency that you want to be in the center of the screen, your start frequency, uh, well your span, your start, and your stop. This module tells you which module you want to use. I only have one module in this one, or you'd have a second antenna. But basically, you can put in the center frequency and it'll it'll kind of do your start and stop frequencies automatically, but you can narrow the frequency that you want down. Now, what this is good for, on stage you have the uh, inner packs or the wireless microphones. It's good for actually being able to go into the room with that with everything turned off and, and scan the room to see if there's any frequencies that um, may be in the spectrum that you're using. So it's a great little device. Um, you can get these things for, uh, I got this at uh, Siege Studio. But you can get these things for like fully loaded for like, I don't know, 250 bucks up to 300 bucks, depending on the what model you get. I think this one was $150. So uh, I'm going to point to the screen over here and I'm going to show you a few things right quick um, about this little thing. This is just the intro video. We'll probably have a couple other videos. I've got a stand to build as well as a module to upgrade. <clears throat> so. When you go to their site, then uh, this basically just shows you all about it. And you can scroll down and read about, you know, all the stuff for the module. They have a a link that you can connect your USB cable to your Mac or PC. And uh, 50 bucks for the program. I don't think they have a Mac version, so you have to use the... Uh, I forget the program in the Mac. I've got it on this one that lets you run Windows. I have Windows XP on this as well. So there's the program and it shows you the um, the free Touchstone and the Touchstone Pro. So if you don't have a PC then you can go to the Apple Store and at the Apple Store they have the IRFE well, IRF Explorer program, which is totally free. You can download it, and then you get these screenshots, and we'll connect that up here in a few minutes. Um, they also have a resources tab, which you can go through, and this shows you, you know, there's the manual, the desktop stand, um, just a little bit of everything about um, the module and how to use it, how to swap between modules if you have a second module in it. Just... A little bit of everything. It's a great little page here. And then when you get on down, you can go through how to assemble the stand, which we're going to do today. Okay, and then this is how to upgrade the module if you have a, a different module to put in it. Okay, so <clears throat> let me slide this out of the way. So basically, what we have. 
<coughs> there's the RF Explorer and here's our cable so in real time here right quick we're going to can we see that yeah we can see that all right let's uh, minimize this <coughs> and connect oops And this is the way you charge it as well. Yeah, it has a battery built into it. So you just connect this and, you know, I've actually, I've never ran the battery completely out. Up, so it, it lasts forever. It's got great battery life. So we'll connect it up and then launch the IRF Explorer. Let's uh, do that later. So now the program's up and running here. <clears throat> and you have different screens that you can work with. Uh, start the live display. So that's just basically the exact display that you're seeing uh, here. And then they have a spectrogram which is really neat. Um, once you adjust this and get the parameters the way you want, which I think is in the config screen here, but once you get the spectrogram the way you want it, this is uh, great for you go into a place and start the spectrogram and just kind of go away and come back a little while later and you can see if there's been any hot spots any frequencies that have peaked because sometimes you may have a certain frequency that doesn't show up just right off the bat but then it like turns on for five seconds and shuts up, shuts down so if you've got some kind of a transmitter in the area that transmits on one of your frequencies but it only does it once an hour for five minutes that or for five seconds at a time if you're in the middle of the show that really creates a problem so the spectrograph really helps out being able to find that um i don't have any frequencies i'm kind of sort of in the country out here so it's it's halfway between country and city and there's hardly no wireless stuff that goes on out here so i can't really show you an active signal but just showing you the nuts and bolts that um for the free program, it's great. You got all kind of different settings that you can work around with and change. Um, it's for the money uh, to not being blind. It's one of the greatest little little things that you can come up with. I don't know if I could get it to even. It just basically just moves around. You know, all this is negative ninety. You know, if we saw a real a sharp peak here then that would definitely be a frequency that would be strong enough to make any interference. Negative 90 dB, no. You get uh, on the attenuation, negative 50, negative 30. That's going to be in the area when you're going to start noticing some interference. And obviously, 0 dB would be full strength. So, we don't have any issues here. Just showing you that, um, like here's your center frequency. And we can change this up or down. And then that moves the, the frequencies around. Um, and then the, the actual span of the frequencies, how far apart that we're reading. I think 25 was the default. And uh, this is the uh, your bottom and your top scale. So uh, if I raise this, if I take this to numerically lower, you're not going to see any activity because all the signals is, is actually less than negative 70. We're at negative 90. So if we take this number and let's say we go to 100, then you're actually going to see more peaks because all of our signals are at like negative 90. So uh, we can take this even at like 120. All this is just like you say like floor noise or this is not really frequencies that we're concerned about because they're so weak. They may be active like this one right here may be an active frequency, but it's not going to affect us because it's negative 90 dB. Let's say we might be worried about something that's 60 dB or stronger. Then that's the way we would set our, our frequency. And uh, you've got changes. You can do the average and your max and your decays and all that. And there's a lot on here for a free program. Now, the only thing that you need to keep in mind, we'll close this down, is there's a driver... If it does not work with your Mac, there's a driver available on their page for a Mac. And I don't remember exactly where it's at, but if you have problems getting 
the RF Explorer to work with your Mac it's a driver it's a simple driver install I've had to install it myself to get it to work so um, if you have if you buy this and you have any issues with it then get in touch with me and I can I can tell you what the driver is but that's all it is it's just a simple driver so anyway that's the basic nuts and bolts of the RF Explorer um, I may have some live screenshots of me using this um, at the church I mix at. I'm try I gotta dig through some of my videos to see if I find it. Um, if anything, I may post at the end of this video um, some screenshots, some almost like a um, I don't know four or five pictures of me using this in a live situation. Like I said, I gotta dig through and see if I can find it. But for right now, that's all I've got. Um, be looking for the second video on this, which will be um, building the stand. Because right now it's like you stand it up this way is fine, but when you get the antenna up in the air, it can kind of flop around. It plugs in on the bottom, so it's hard to stand it up when you've got it connected to your Mac or your PC. So it's nice if that plug can come out the bottom. So in the second video, we'll build the stand for it. And then in the third video, we'll actually assemble the card. I've got a, a 2.5 or 2 5 gigahertz card to go in it which would be like Wi-Fi and uh, we'll go over that. So anyhow thanks for watching. Um, if you got any comments please leave them below. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and uh, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.